This is the inbound secret. My name is Bryce, and I'm your host for The Inbound Secret, where we're talking with top performers and health experts and sales badasses alike about their strategies to optimize their well-being and performance. Once again, this is The Inbound Secret, and, and let's get rocking and rolling. This is The Inbound. This is, this is, this is The Inbound. This is The Inbound. This is The Inbound Secret. Welcome back to another episode of The Inbound Secret. It's Bryce here again, and I've got a very special guest. We've got Chantel Turner here today, who I, I don't know much about you, but Trey talked you up a lot. So I was excited to have you on. And you specialize in kind of the organic network connection side of things, right? Yeah, I do. And I, I appreciate you asking me to join you today. I'm excited to be here. Well, thank you for, thank you for joining us. Uh, I know everybody's excited about listening to you and getting to know you a little bit more. So without further ado, go ahead and introduce yourself. So as you said, I'm Chantal Turner um, and about, gosh, it's been a long time now, almost seven years. Um, I guess more longer than that, eight years. <laughs> I was happily building a career in corporate America. Never thought about being an entrepreneur, even though both of my parents are. I don't know. I, school said, you get a job. And I was like, yes, school, I will do as you say. And uh, I had a job. I was in sales in corporate America. And uh, my husband and I got pregnant. And when my daughter was born, she actually had a stroke in utero just before her birth. And our entire world shifted. We spent obviously a lot of time in the hospital, um, going through some challenges with her, trying to get her everything that she needed. And we had this massive financial debt due to all that time there. And my husband was working 80% of the year traveling. I was working full time. There was no way we had a brand new baby. I couldn't take on another job. So I turned to the internet because somebody told me you can make money on the internet. And I was like, let's go. I need, I need money. It can be made on the internet. Let's do this. And uh, obviously it was network marketing. That's the gateway drug into entrepreneurship. I like to call it. <laughs> it went terribly. Um, I did not do well. I did not make money with that company. It was a product I did not believe in. And it really kind of just soured my taste even more about all of those kind of false beliefs about like the scams on the internet. Um, and so I just kind of felt really defeated and along came a second opportunity, which I ended up taking advantage of, was able to actually build a really good team, totally paid off all of our medical bills. And I really started to understand how to connect with people over the internet. I'm a great networker in person, but it's so like not personable on the internet. So I had to figure out, I'm like, how do you connect with people and form a true relationship? Not those DMs where you know the person pops into your inbox and they're like, hey, how are you? What's, what are you up to? What have you been doing lately? And you're like waiting for the pitch. So I had to find a way not to be that person. And, um, and I did very well. Eventually I decided that who I really wanted to help were other special needs parents just like me. And so I founded a brand called Stronger Mommy, and I started helping special needs parents get the resources, support, and community that, that they needed. And through that, I created my first Facebook group. I knew nothing about what I was doing, but I had been in other Facebook groups with other parents for special needs kids, and they were terrible. These women would like viciously tear each other down. They were so mean. And I thought, gosh, there's got to be a place. It's like this safe space for these moms. And that community blew up. It went from zero to 3000 members in less than six months, over 90% engagement, meaning all of those people that were there were actually posting, commenting, participating in the group. And Facebook reached out, invited me to be a part of what they call their power admins um, because my group was so engaged. And along that journey, I was looking for ways to, you know, kind of grow my own brand, build my own thing, uh, have a lot of people come to me and say, how are you doing all this? How did you grow your group? How did you get to where you are? Um, and, and through that, I kind of started teaching people how to network and, and build a strong organic relationship online. So that's the long and the short of me. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that I've got to ask before we kind of get too far into this topic. Who was the network marketing company? The one that I failed or the one that I was successful with because I did both. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. So the first one, the fail. The second one, the win. Yeah. Run me through what those were. So the first company um, was a company called Jamberry. I'm not even sure if they're still around. It's like these stickers that you put on your nail instead of nail polish. Now, 
to know something about me is to know that I hate nail polish. I have fake nails. I realize that like half the people listening to this podcast are probably men and like don't care. But long story short, it was a product that I had zero desire to ever yeah. use myself. But my friend said, you can make money on the internet and I needed money. So I did it. And it obviously it went terribly wrong, not because it's a bad product or because people don't love it. There are some people that do, but it was a bad product for me because it wasn't something I used or I believed in. So I had no like real strong story behind it. The second company, um, I actually found the product first. It's, a, it's called Lavelle. It's a health and wellness company. Um, their products are called Thrive, if you've ever heard of the Thrive supplements. And my friend had talked to me about using their product because I was in a place where I was like, I mean, my daughter and then everything that we were going through and all that, I was falling asleep driving to work. I was so tired all the time. So she said, just try this and change your life. I'm like, you're crazy. I don't need your stuff. Like I'm, t- I'm healthy. I'm taking, I'm taking supplements, like whatever this is, I don't need it. I didn't know it was network marketing. I tried it and it truly did for me change my life. It made a yeah. massive difference in my everyday function. And because of that, and the people around me that saw that difference, I was so easily able to share it. And so it's not that one company was better than the other. Um, it's that I was a better marketer of a brand that I believed in. And so with that company, um, technically still with them, although I do very little these days, but um, I mean, gosh, they are, they were my savior. They helped me pay off over hundred thousand dollars in medical debt, uh, 13 trips, car bonuses. Like it's been, you know, it's, it's an incredible journey and it really taught me all of the mindset stuff that I didn't know I needed when I was just a corporate America person. Like before you get on the internet, like before you're an entrepreneur, you don't know about all these like mindset tricks and entrepreneurial books and things like, I mean, I read how to win friends and influence people and the secret and, and learned about all this stuff because of them. And so I don't think I would be here without that part of my journey. Well, and that's really why I wanted to ask who was your failure and who was your win? Because there's, there's so many people out there that hear network marketing, right? <clears throat> and they're immediately like pyramid scheme. Nope. It's a dirty but, word. <laughs> but, but most of the time, most of the failures are because they're trying to sell a product they don't align with, they don't believe in, and they don't know how to make an impact with because it doesn't mean anything to them. And you explained it better than I think anybody else could. It's not that the company was bad or the product was bad. It just was a bad fit for you. Because it wasn't something that you aligned with, you didn't believe in, and you didn't have passion for. But the second company, you did because you experienced something that just kind of resonated, right? It, it, yeah. It wasn't that you had to try to connect anybody or sell the product. You were just you were just doing you, and it showed. A hundred percent. And there, you know, there are bad companies, but there are bad companies in in regular brick and mortar businesses, and yeah. they're all over the place. You know, I think more it gets a bad rap because there are so many people out there saying you can make money on the internet it's easy and it's not easy but it's simple and that's where people miss it it was never hard it was never complicated to make money with that company once i figured out that i loved the product and i thought about who else would love it it was never complicated but it did take work money does just doesn't just show up like i had to i had to work for that and put in the time, put in the effort, manage the team, handle all of the logistics of that, it still takes work. And I think that's where people think, oh, it's just a pyramid scheme because they hear, oh, well, it's so easy to make money in network marketing. And while it's well, simple, it's not easy. And I love your explanation. It's not easy, it's simple. Because uh, for instance, I own, I own four companies, digital marketing, app development, education, info products, and then we do like SMMA digital content stuff, right? And all of those are nomad companies. They're digital. We don't have a brick and mortar for them. Like we operate typically from either a nomad office or from our houses, right? But we've got a huge team. We've got imprints in like six countries. We've helped thousands of people. And it's all mostly through the internet and stuff like Zoom, right? What we're what we're doing this on. And it's it's one of those things that me and James Smiley recorded yesterday and his show's coming up here, the episode right before yours. And one of the things that we were talking about so much on that is there is truth in it's easy to make money online, but the truth is it's not that it's less work. It's that it's just simpler work. You don't have to do more stuff. You just have to keep doing the stuff. 
right? But whether that be network marketing, digital marketing, you decide that you want to start a YouTube channel, you decide that you want to be a pro gamer, you want to sell t-shirts on Amazon, you want to sell books, whatever the business is, the truth in the matter is, is people mistake simple for easy. And it's not that it's difficult. It's just, you have to have dedication to it. It's still a business. You still have to put in the time and energy and work and dedication to it. That kind of leads me to my next question, because you just heard of the four companies that I operate and, and our specialty is really ecosystems, omnipresent client acquisition, lead generation, sales scaling. But I'll be the first to admit, like, I abused my Facebook group. I don't think I've used it in over a year. We just started kind of trying to revitalize stuff and build a new one. And for somebody in my space, like I specialize in helping businesses leverage the internet, right? But Facebook groups and that micro sub niche of the organic marketing side, the organic traffic side, isn't my strong suit. I, I hire people to handle that because it's not my strong suit. And so like, you're like the perfect person that I'd reach out to and be like, Hey, my group needs love. How do I make this thing work? Right. And we may actually have to talk after this recording about <laughs> that because I do need some group love. Uh, tell me a little bit about, cause there's so many people out there, right? You've got, you've got the people that are like, I'll build the group for you. You can hit Fiverr and find 5,000 people that claim that they know what they're doing with a group. You've got group automation tools. And then you've got like these massive conglomerate groups that at face value seem like they're awesome. There's a hundred thousand people in it. And then 80,000 of those people are just shitting on each other. And 20,000 of them care, but they're not super engaged because everybody's shitting on each other. Tell me about not only your journey, but kind of like the psychology behind how, how you structure that to be so impactful. Because 90% of your members engaging regularly is incredible. Yeah. So I did it by accident. I didn't know, like we all have gifts and superpowers. I didn't know this was one of mine. It just made intuitive sense to me. And then when I would talk to people, people were like, wait, what? You you do what? Why, how did you even think of that? And I was like, I don't know. That's just, it made sense to me. So first off, I tr it's, it's gonna blow your mind. It's, it's crazy and surprising, but the, on the other side of your computer screen are actual human beings <laughs> that want to feel recognized and acknowledged as human beings. And it's so rare that they feel like you as another human being know who they are, that if you can be the person that acknowledges their existence, they will love you forever. It's crazy. And so I just treat my group members yeah. like human beings. Surprise. I know, but a couple <laughs> of things, it's crazy. A couple of things that I did early on that I didn't know I was doing um, intentionally, but turned out to be a very strong uh, method and, and has now become a framework for how I, I teach building groups is especially when I started my first group, Stronger Mommies, I got extremely clear on who I wanted in there, but also who I didn't. I had looked at those other groups and I thought, God, I don't like, I don't like this negativity. I don't like that there's kind of some random people in here, some unsupportive people. And so I used those questions that Facebook asks you. And for me, whether it's that group or any group that I start now or any client that I work with, question number one is, are you a perfect fit for this group or not? So for stronger mommies, for parents who have kids with special needs, question number one says, are you currently parenting a child with special needs? I get answers that say yes. I get answers that list out 12 different diagnoses. I get answers that say no, but I'm a single mom of six. And when I see that no, I'm like, cool, go find a single mom's group. This is yeah. not for you. Like you're, that's incredible. You have six kids. Good. Like I don't, I would die. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Go find a single mom's group. Right. Yeah. So I only let those perfect people in. I get therapists that want to come in. I get doctors that want to come in and I say, no, because you're not my dream customer. You're not that perfect person. And so by being such a good gatekeeper of the group instantly builds trust with those members. They feel safe there. They feel connected to other people just like them. And so already that strengthens, strengthens the group. Then question number two, I always ask like, 
how did you find me? Because I'm, I'm, I love some good market research. If somebody's out there sharing my name, I want to be like, sweet, thanks. <laughs> I'm not even in the Thinkific group. And I literally will get people that join my group, uh, one of my other groups, not Stronger Mommies, but from Thinkific. And they're like, oh yeah, so-and-so shouted you out in Thinkific. I'm like, sweet, thank you. Or they'll say Facebook suggested it. I love that one. I'm like, I'm not running ads. And people are like, oh, I saw your ad. I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> but it's because Facebook suggests my group because it has so much you know, yeah. activity going on. And then question number three, obviously collect their email. You always want to be able to own that list. I don't want Facebook to own my group list. So I ask and 98.9% .9 of people give it to you. Yeah. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing I do is I always have a welcome post and a welcome video that is pinned or they call it marked as an announcement now, but to the top of the page. And that means that they see my face. I don't care if you suck on video. I don't care if you hate yourself on video, like get over it, do a video yeah. <laughs> and they see who you are. And I talk to them and that video I actually pre-record, but I talk to it as if it's live. So I pretend that it's live. I do the video, I pre-record it and I post it. This is the secret to my Facebook business page. And then I share it into my group. And what this allows me to do is now every single person in my group who sees at least three seconds of that, which is every member, is now pixeled. And I can run ads to my group members, but I can also run an ad to people that look like my group members who are only my dream audience. So it opens up, you take organic and you add in this incredible ability to run ads to a very highly targeted focus. But also those people are getting a video from me that says, welcome to the group. I encourage you to share and to post here and to be accepted. And then the third thing that I do, and I made this very silly acronym, but it works, is called care. So I care about my members. So C is comment. I comment on their posts. I actually have um, admin post approval turned on, not so that I can protect the group, although it does do that as well from those errant posts that shouldn't get in. <laughs> but it means that I get notified that there's a post. So I am the first person to approve it and the first person to comment. How cool is it that like this person who feels like a celebrity to them, the owner of this group comments on their posts. So I comment, I relate, oh, care, C-A. <laughs> I acknowledge that they, we got to spell right. I acknowledge that they exist, right? I'm participating with them in their discussions within the group. Um, then I relate to what they're going through. I talk about maybe something that I've gone through that's similar and somebody else that went through that experience and I engage with their content. And by caring about my members, they care about me. And so I don't care about those vanity metrics that you talked about, 100,000 people in your group, good, have fun. Most of those people probably don't even know who the F you are. They don't care, right? But if I have a good group of 500 or a thousand people that are all my dream customer, it's all you need to explode your business or your brand. You just need those people that actually want to be there, want to participate and want to care. Well, you made such a good point. One of the, I don't know how big you are in the, the like paid side of things, right? But one of Brunson's books, Dotcom Secrets, one of the, like a whole chapter about it is about you only need a thousand people to make or break a business. You, you don't need a ton of people. You need a thousand. If you have a thousand dedicated members, you could have a 10 figure business if you nurture them properly. It's yeah. just about how do you cultivate that relationship? So we, we know kind of how you accidentally fell into it. And clearly you've turned this into like, this is you, this, this, is, your, this is your superpower, right? Uh, by the way, I love the care like anagram that you created, genius. What would, for somebody who's maybe just now getting into Facebook, maybe they're just now, maybe they're following your journey and similar to my journey where they're 2020 kicked the crap out of them. And they're like, I need money. I hear you can make money on the internet. Let's try and help them avoid all of the falling on their face that I'm sure you have done as well as I have done. And let's try and just give them like, What's one gold nugget that you could say, John Smith or Mary Smith coming in, they're wanting to start making money online, but more importantly, they want to they want to make an impact, right? We're we're all about making an impact here at the Inbound Secret. So tell me, tell me one thing that everybody listening could do today to kind of supercharge their ability to set that foundation up. Now, before you go, everybody listening, I do have to apologize. If you hear banging or a dog or a cat or what sounds like a grave digger throwing headstones, uh, I'm at home in my bedroom, as you can see. We've got diesel and tuxedo roaming around. And currently, our entire subfloor 
is being re-insulated and new vents and insulation hung because we had, long story short, we had a water leak that destroyed our crawl space. So they're fixing it. So just bear with us if you hear loud noises. I appreciate you guys being on here. Uh, so sorry for the little interruption, Chantel. I will let you go ahead. Yeah, so I would say, you know, the big thing is to figure out what you're going to market, whatever that is that you, you said it earlier, like whatever you sell, there's somebody out there that wants to buy it. Heck, back in the eighties or the nineties, people bought pet rocks. It was a rock with googly eyes glued onto it. And people paid money for that. Some dude made millions from the, the noodle that you put in your pool. Like it doesn't matter what you sell, but what you have to do is believe in the thing that you're selling. And that's where I failed the first time and succeeded the second time. I found a product I truly loved that truly worked for me, that I believed in. And then I thought about who could benefit the most from that thing. So I always tell people um, this little story, you know, if, if you're whatever, let's say I sell water. It's my favorite story because I don't sell water, but every time I'm done, people want to buy the damn water. So I'm going to start selling water someday, but let's say I sell water. I sell alkaline water. Okay. And now that could benefit everybody. Alkaline is really good. If you have, you know, different ailments in your body, I know very little about it. I'm literally going to make up half of what I'm about to tell you, but you'll believe that it's true because I'm so passionate about this product. I don't want you to make up things about your services or your products, but I want you to believe in them. And so you have to think about who's that perfect person. Cause it could work for kids. It could work for moms. It could work for dads. It could work for executives, but I have to think about like, who's my dream customer. So maybe my dream customer is Joe. He's a dad of two. He commutes two hours every single day to and from work. He works a corporate job. It's blue collar, but you know, he's trying to make it, you know, up the ladder kind of thing. And uh, every single morning he gets up at 4 AM exhausted, but he just like, wants to have that one hour in the gym before the rest of the house wakes up. So he gets up, he crawls his butt to the gym. He feels gross about it. He's tired. He comes back home. He tries to help the wife get the kids ready for school. Then he's off. He's sitting in traffic for an hour. He's miserable. By the time he gets to work, he's grumpy. He's cranky. His boss is up his butt all day about this, that, and the other. Now he's coming back home in traffic. The wife's nagging him because he was home late tonight. He's got to get the kids to bed and he's too exhausted to do anything for himself. And every single day, this is Joe's life. And I come along and I say, Joe, if you're going through, if, if you're a dad of two and you love your family, you love your kids, you're waking up every single morning a little bit early trying to better yourself. Let me tell you, if you drink this brand of alkaline water first thing in the morning when you get up, you're going to have the best workout you've probably ever had. You're going to feel energized when you get into that gym and you're going to feel really good about getting up and going to the gym and working out. And then you drink another bottle on your drive to work. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to have this clarity in your mind while you're driving. And even though you're stuck in traffic, you're going to feel really good about all the different thoughts that are in your brain. You're going to feel really empowered. You're going to get to work and you're going to be in a good mood. And because you're in a good mood when you get to work, your boss is going to be less of a jerk. It doesn't bother you as much. When you feel good and somebody else is in a bad mood, it just doesn't bother you. And so you're going to have another glass during lunch. And by the time you come home, you drink that last bottle on the way home, you know, on your drive, you're going to come home, you're going to kiss your wife, you're going to show her how much you love her. And because you have the energy and the clarity of mind from this water, you're going to feel amazing. Now, can I get you a bottle of this alkaline water? Well, hell yeah, Joe wants the water because I <laughs> talked to Joe. He knew exactly what the benefit was. But if I don't know who my dream customer is for the thing that I'm selling, I can't sell them anything. I'm just marketing to the masses and they don't know why they need it. If I just said, well, I have this really great water and it helps with like energy and mental focus and some clarity. And Joe's like, I don't know if I need those things. But when I tell this story about the journey that it can take him on, because I know him so well, he desperately needs that water. And so that's my biggest piece of advice is to figure out what you, what you want to sell, whatever that is, it doesn't matter. Figure out what it is figure out who needs it and what are the things specifically about that product that they need. And that's it. I, I love the, so first off, wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's one of, that's one of the biggest lessons that we start with, with all of our clientele and, and our coaching clients is they always come to us with some kind of product or service that they want to release to the market. Right. And it's always, all right, do you know who you're selling to? Well, yeah, anybody can do this. N no, 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 that's not what I asked. Women but, between the ages of 24 and 75. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you so much for, for really just really just highlighting that. You did a spectacular job there. Uh, and it's sound advice. That I think that's the biggest thing. It's the it's your focal point. It's the crux on what your offer will be built on. If you know who you sell to, you can sell them to it. Also, I, I do have to talk about the pet rock for a second. Because I freaking love this story. 
I don't I don't know if you know the story or if anybody listening really or not. knows this story, but the gentleman who sold the pet rock in the 80s through the 90s when it was really popular, he was a sales coach. He made the majority of his living through his life teaching sales and marketing tactics in universities and on stages. That's what his career was. And the pet rock was kind of happenstance. So during one of his speeches, I forget where it was at, but it was, I believe it was at a university. I'll have to look up the story to be specific. But somebody challenged him. He always did a QA. Every time he talked, he was like, any questions, anything you want me to dive deeper in? And somebody, his, his mantra was, you can sell anything to anybody. If you know who they are, you know what to say. That was his core of his offer, right? And somebody was like, you can't sell anything to anybody. I don't care what you tell them. And he's like, yes, you can. And he's like, all right, I'll challenge you. You have this event in one year. I'll be back here and I'll bring every single person I know if you can sell a rock to people. Three months later, the pet rock was launched. And in the first 12 months, it did like nine or 10 figures in sales because he knew who his ideal client was and he knew what to tell them so he could sell anything. He made America, not just America, the world, but primarily the American market, so indoctrinated in my kid wants a pet, but I don't want to take care of a living animal because they won't. Let's get them a pet that doesn't have to eat, drink, or use the potty. He got us so indoctrinated into that that people were buying pet rocks like it was Thursday night dinner. Like I had one. They were just sold out. And I think I still own one. I, think I don't think I still own it. I, ha- I had one. <laughs> I think I still own one. From when I was, like I was born in 92. So I wasn't even in the target launch of this. And I still think I own one. And it, it's not because it's a particularly great product. It's a freaking rock with paint on it. It's not that they were systemized. They, none of them look the same. They're all just rocks. It's not particularly that it was an expensive or inexpensive product. It was like a $13 rock. Right? It was a really expensive rock with paint yeah. and eyes <laughs> and some it, hair. It was because he knew he was selling to. He was selling to the mom and dad, working class people, whose son or daughter was bugging the shit out of them for anything from a goldfish to a dog. And this made them happy. And he sold the shit out of that thing. I love talking about that story. <laughs> and the story, he told a story along with it. You know, there was, there, there, I remember a lot of the marketing around that. And I was a kid, so I was born at 85. Um, I remember, you know, just like being excited to go to the mall, to go to the little stand that had all the different ones. You could like pick your pet out. You could name your pet. You saw the commercials of them. Like, it's a rock. But there was so much believability from the marketing standpoint, the story, the crafting and the knowing, like you said, who was being marketed to that everybody wanted one. Like you were literally not the cool kid if you couldn't have a pet rock. Well, and that lesson and even the psychology that was used for that at that stand is still used today. Build-A-Bear is the same offer. It's the exact same core offer to the same core audience. The only difference is it's modernized. Rather than picking your pet, you build your pet. It's the same thing. Well, and even like the digital pets, right? It's the same idea. The Tamagotchis back in the 90s. You oh, have God, little... I killed so many of those. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the same thing. It gave you the endorphin of like, you have to feed it. You have to take care of it. You have to do all these things. But again, it was marketed towards, like you said, the parents saying, hey, you don't want to buy your kid a pet, buy them this alternative, right? And it was, it was the solution to a problem that nobody else was solving. Parents, kids wanted pets, parents didn't want to own pets, incomes, options, where parents don't have to take care of the pet. Yeah, I, I love the fact that from, from the start of this conversation with you, you've been hyper-focused on not only is this what I do, this is how I do it, but this is who I do it for. And and it wasn't one of those, it wasn't one of those situations where it's, well, I can do it for this, 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 this. It was, this is who the client is. And then we build content around them, 
not as an avatar, but as a person. <laughs> Yeah, Brendan Bouchard said it, and I don't know if somebody said it before him, probably because nothing is original on the planet, but I heard him say it, so I'll credit Brendan. And he said something along the lines of, when we have a product and you like your marketing, you don't change the product, you change who you're marketing the product to. So you can have the same product and you just change the messaging. You message, you, you might have messaging and marketing towards moms. You might have messaging and marketing towards dads, towards old people, towards young people. You don't do all of that all at once, message all those people at the same time and say, hey, this works for everybody, moms, dads, young kids, old kids. Doesn't matter. No, you have different messaging for each, but the product, if it does work for those people is the same. It's just that you're highlighting the different benefits and features and transformations that it will do for that singular marketing message. Yeah, absolutely. So with that in mind, because all of these lessons can be used in paid advertising, organic advertising, content creation, basically life. Tell me about how let's use moms for example because you've got a you've got a superpower moms group right and by the way i love the fact that you have that niche down to moms of special needs children that's a that's a fantastic idea and there's so many of them out there that really need that support and you've given that to them so so i applaud you for that so let's use moms as an example because there's a lot of single moms and working moms out they're really struggling this year because 2020s put more pressure on them to be teachers now, put more pressure on them for at home time, taking away some of their freedoms because now they've got to babysit their husband and their kids and their job and their house without having to escape because the, the goal is never to escape your life. It's to make a life worth not escaping, right? How do, what's something that these moms that really could benefit from from connecting with you what's something that you would recommend that they start doing daily some small task some some mindset some action something to get them in a situation where they don't feel so burdened first of all but not only could they go join your group if if they're the right fit but how can they start connecting with other people that they can make an impact for without having to spend countless hours trying to build something from scratch, without having to spend money on advertising or product research. Maybe they don't even have a business. They're just looking to get that connection. What, what would be something that they can do? Yeah, so it's kind of two things. I mean, the first thing to do is to, what are you passionate about? Go join groups that are around those things. If you love to crochet, go find some crocheting Facebook groups. And in those groups, Start helping as many people as you can. If you're really good at crochet, answer somebody's question, network with the other people in there, treat them like humans because you will kind of rise to the top as the expert by accident. I, when I became Stronger Mommy, when I founded that brand, I had one child who was a year old who had some specific special needs, not all of them, not multiple children, not multiple ages, one child that was a year old. And all I did was inside of those groups, not even intentionally, when somebody asked a question, I just like to answer. So I just like to help. So somebody had asked a question. I was like, oh, I just figured that out for myself. Here you go. Here's the solution. And I was always the person giving the answer. And what happened was people started looking to me for the answer. So when I launched Stronger Mommy and, and created that group in that space, I already had people who had looked to me for the answer, even though I was like, who am I? I have one kid. I would have people with multiple kids, multiple ages, different challenges, you know, things that I'd never dealt with in my life. They didn't come for my experience in that specific thing. They came for the way that I look at certain challenges. And they had seen that I was somebody that was there helping them solve their problems. They wanted to be a part of that. So as a mom or anybody really, you can think about like, what are you passionate about? Go join groups like that. Go help where you can go network and connect and make some friends. Cause I don't know about everybody else, but I can always use more friends, like good ones, genuine ones, right? Just be a real person in there. So that's the first thing. And then the other thing is if you are looking to make some money from home and you, you're kind of like, well, crap, what do I do? I don't have, like, I hear this all the time from moms. I've been, a, you know, they, I've been a stay at home mom for 10 years. I don't have any skills. I don't have anything that I could sell. I don't know marketing. I don't have any money to invest. I don't want to do network marketing because I don't want to sell things to people. So there's nothing that I can do from home to make money. And it's such a lie. So stop telling yourself that lie. Instead, 
think about all the skills that you have. Are you great at laundry? I know that doesn't sound like a skill, like, but if you don't mind laundry and you're pretty good at folding some stuff and like not, I, I, I accidentally dye things the wrong color all the time. I'm not great at laundry. That is not my skill. If you're great at research, like you could just, your husband wants the newest, latest, greatest thing. And you're like, wait, honey, let me go look it up on 12 different websites and find the cheapest one. If you're great at teaching your kids from home, I am not like, doesn't matter what their, that skill is list everything you're good at everything. Doesn't matter if you don't think it's a skill. I don't care. List it, vacuuming, list it out. Okay. And then go back down that list and cross off all the things that no matter how much money somebody paid you, you still wouldn't want to do like, I don't mind vacuuming, right? But like, if somebody paid me a thousand dollars, hell yeah, I'll come back to you in your house. Like you might be like, I never want to see another vacuum in my life. That one gets crossed <laughs> off, right? You cross all those off and you're left with a pile of skills and you can find people that would like to pay you for those skills. So then if you're like, but I can't leave my home to go do somebody else's laundry because I have kids at home. Cool, cross that one off. Maybe you're great at research. There are people on the internet, me, that hate research. I will happily pay somebody to do me the too. research for. Like I will, I will pay you if you do good research and you organize that. I am like, by all means. So maybe you're good at writing or typing or drawing. Like there's so many skills out there. So all I'm saying is figure out what you're good at. Like, and, and then just start asking people, hey, does anybody need help with some research? And you'll get people that say, oh, I do. Cool, charge 50 bucks to go research something and work your way up. So I want to add to that because because you piqued an interest and in, and one of my prior guests she specializes in virtual events right and she actually introduced me to these people some amazing women I never thought some of these were possible right never thought you could monetize some of these she introduced me to a woman who's virtually bartending and getting paid well to do it okay. She, to put this in simple terms, she does a live stream where she makes custom cocktails and gets paid for that. I see it. Yeah. I totally see it. So for you mentioned laundry, research, vacuuming, cleaning, folding, food, cooking. I don't care what that is. I just wanted to add to your statement. You're a hundred percent right. Binging with Babish is one of the most popular cooking YouTube channels there is, and it's a video from neck down of a guy cooking food that we can't eat, we can't smell, we can't touch, we can't engage with, we just watch him. You can absolutely turn your what you consider a menial task into a profit center where you can actually like build relationships and help change lives by doing what you're just chilling at home doing. Just put it on video. 100% build an audience. And then, yeah, you have two routes. If you're like, I don't ever want to have an audience or a following. I don't want to build. I don't want to do videos. I don't want to market myself. Cool. Then what skills do you have that somebody will pay for that you can sell your skill, right? I don't love selling time for money, but it's a great place to start if you have no money and you have extra time. So yeah. it's not the end result, but if you're sitting at home and you're like, I have six hours a day while my kids nap or whatever, and I'm not really doing anything, like I could do some internet research or I could you know, type out some spreadsheets or I could design some stuff in Canva, which is a free platform. Like there's so many options. So I just hate when people say that I have no skills. I have nothing that I can do. There are tons of people out there looking for somebody that can take something off their plate. Or like you said, people want to watch. I get, I get the bartending thing because so many people want to be great hosts. I want to know how to make cool drinks for my people coming over. I would hop on a Zoom to learn, right? We watch cooking channels so we can learn how to cook better. And so we can see all that delicious food that we desperately want to eat. Um, we watch travel shows and all that kind of stuff. Like there are so many different ways for you to, to sell something that you're passionate about. So forget trying to figure out like, what will people pay for? Figure out what are you excited to do day in, day out? Like whether people pay for it or not, do that thing and money will come. A hundred percent. Yeah. You've got to be passionate about whatever you do because that resonates. Like I, it, there's so many people out there and I run into them every day where somebody's like, well, I don't really like what I do, but I'm good at it. Or yeah, the product's okay, but it sells. Well, yeah, that's fine. But your, your customers, your relationships, your following, your friends, they know you're not authentic when you're doing it. Like it, it comes off. The reason that 
that historic cliche of the the dirtbag used car salesman that's selling a 1968 coupe in 1980 for brand new prices and is just shysting you came to be was because of inauthenticity. If that salesman loved that fucking car, I guarantee you nobody would have ever come up with that cliche of he's just a sleazy car salesman, right? But and you you see that like. I'm a car guy, so like I spend a lot of time. Anything with a motor that shoots bullets, I'm all about, right? Uh, but when I go somewhere, if I don't feel like they're authentic, I'm probably not going to buy from those people, whether it be a firearm, a car, accessories, whatever it is. But if I walk into a dealership, used or new, and the salesman fucking loves the vehicle that we're talking about, done. <laughs> In everything that I do, I, I think of it as how can I help? Like, I love to problem solve. If you were like, Chantel, you can no longer be an entrepreneur, go get a quote unquote real job. Uh, that's what everybody else is not an entrepreneur called it. They're like, get a real job. Mm -hmm. uh, I would go work for a think tank because I just love to think shit up and solve problems. That's like my dream all day long. I will solve problems. But like you said, you have to be authentic about it. Like if, if you're passionate about that thing and you're excited about it, people will get like they'll catch on to your excitement. They'll be so excited with you because you are excited. If you're like, yeah, it's this thing. Like it does some stuff. No, but people, if you value you, you're excited about what you do and you do a good job, plenty of people will pay for it. hundred percent. So we've got to wrap up here, but before we do, I have two favors. Well, three favors really, but we're going to break them into two points. Favor one, what's like one last gold nugget and it can be anything you want for the people listening. Favor two, just do like your quick elevator pitch of like what you do for people. And favor three, where can people find you and connect with you? Yeah. So, okay. So the first one was a golden nugget. Um, I have to remember all these. <laughs> Clearly not my superpower. Um, I would say a golden nugget is just connect with people fine like i know that seems scary but just do it don't be afraid to fail don't be afraid that somebody's not going to like you because guess what some people they're not going to like you and that's just how it is and some people are going to think you are the bee's knees they're going to think you're the coolest thing on the planet so get out there find out what you're passionate about and go connect with other people that are just like you build relationships um what was it say? oh what do i do <laughs> like like i don't remember what you asked um i i do a lot of things but uh primarily i work with clients helping them um build their systems and processes up so that they can be that go-to person in their niche so i call it the notable leader and um and i have a program called uh, notable leader army and it's really just about building up to be that expert in in your area of expertise and then how can you connect with me just find me chantelle page turner like a book like a yeah it's a real page turner um i am a best-selling author so now we can all laugh about it together but uh <laughs> find me on facebook that's the best place to connect with me you can try and connect with me on other platforms so i'm gonna tell you facebook's where i hang out i love to meet new people don't be somebody that dms me and tries to ask me 100 things about myself because i just don't care that much about me uh, but if you're looking to genuinely network i'm totally in awesome awesome well thank you for being on here so much uh if you don't mind sticking around a few minutes after i'd love to pick your brain and possibly figure out how to work together because i do need some group love uh anybody listening make sure that you guys connect with chantelle she's your connector superpower any moms listening out there that do have special needs children go check out her group I, I'm not a mom or have special need children, so I can't verify how awesome it is, but she seems to be super passionate about it. So I know you guys will love it. And then stay tuned for our next episode of The Inbound Secret. This is The Inbound Secret. My name is Bryce, and I'm your host for The Inbound Secret, where we're talking with top performers and health experts and sales badasses alike about their strategies to optimize their well-being and performance. Once again, this is The Inbound Secret, and, and let's get rocking and rolling. This is The Inbound. This is The Inbound. This is The Inbound. This is The Inbound Secret.